everyone. I welcome you all to the lecture 14 of this course, Construction Methods and Equipment Management. So, in this lecture, we will be discussing about the uh, fixed position excavating equipments like uh, French shovel and backhoe. So, in the last lecture, we have discussed about the loaders, okay, and we have also discussed about the different types of loaders and how to estimate the productivity of loader. So, let us look into the outline of today's presentation. In today's presentation, we will be discussing about the French shovels its applications and factors affecting the selection of the French shovel and the productivity of the French shovel and how to estimate the productivity. Then we will be discussing about the backhoe its applications and what are all the possible attachments um, which can be used for different applications of backhoe and how to make the selection of the backhoe. So, these are the things which we are going to discuss in the upcoming slides. So, basically shovels can be divided into two types based upon the digging motion of the bucket. Okay. So, in the first picture, you can see that the digging motion of the bucket is in upward direction. Okay. So, it is in upward direction. So, that means the bucket is moving away from the machine. So, that is called as the front shovel. In back hoe or the back shovel, you can see that the digging motion of the bucket is in downward direction. That is, the bucket is moving towards the machine. Okay. So, that is called as the back shovel or back hoe. Basically, when you want to go for digging, above the ground level at or above the ground level, then we prefer the front shovel. So, when you want to go for digging below the ground level, so for deeper digging below the ground level, you go for the back shovel. Okay. So, this is how we have to choose whether we are going for a, um, whether we will go for a front shovel or a back shovel. So, wherever you want to do the excavation at or above the ground level, go for front shovel. So, for um, the deeper excavations where you want to do the uh, digging below the ground level, you go for the back hoe or the back shovel. So, let us first discuss about the French shovel. This picture shows you the uh, French shovel of a very huge capacity. So, basically these shovels are fixed position excavating machines. That means, they are not designed for uh, much mobility. So, from the loading to dumping position, basically um, it is not designed to move. It will just swing its boom it will just swing its boom from loading to dumping position. So, that is why we call them as fixed position excavating machine. So, as I told you this French shovel is generally needed when you want hot digging, okay, hot digging of rock say um, you can handle the rock easily with this machine. So, at or above the ground level. So, this machine is the right choice. So, this is useful when considerable hot digging of rock from a bank that will stand with a vertical phase. So, that means, um, this machine will give you a very good productivity when it is used for excavating a material which is standing like a vertical wall okay, perpendicular to the ground. Say for example, you are going for a hill cutting, it stands vertical okay, perpendicular to the ground. In that case, it will be very convenient to use a front shovel. So, it can be used to excavate any bank of material or in a quarry. Okay, very commonly, you can see this uh, machine in the quarry. So, whatever rock you have blasted um, the, using the blasting method, so those blasted rock pieces or the short rock can be excavated um, the, with the help of the French shovel. So, it is used in quarry work for loading of the short rock. So, but it is purely dependent on a truck or any hauling machine for hauling the material. Okay. So, basically this shovel will swing its boom from loading to dumping position and dump the material into the truck. It is not designed for a high mobility. Okay. So, it is used for quarry work or a side hill cutting. So, basically if you want to use this material for excavating below the ground level, then what are you supposed to do? You have to do the um, ramping down. That means, the shovel must dig a ramp down okay, into the material until a digging phase of desired height is obtained. So, then only it will be easier to use the French shovel. So, if you want to excavate the material below the ground level, basically what they adopt is they will uh, construct a ramp okay, down into the material. Okay. They ramp down till they reach a digging phase which is um, the desirable to cut with the French shovel. Okay. So, that is how they do for excavation below the ground level if you want to use the French shovel. Okay. So, this picture shows you the basic operating parts of the French shovel. Okay. So, basically the substructure has a mounting, uh, mostly you can see crawler mounting and the superstructure has the operator cap um, along with the engine. So, you can see the boom, this is a boom, Okay, you can see the boom and this is the stick or the dipper arm 
okay, and this one is a bucket or the dipper. So, these are basically hydraulic machines, they work based on hydraulic power. So, you will be having the IC based diesel engines to operate the hydraulic pump, motor okay, and the hydraulic cylinders which is going to deliver the power for digging operation. Okay, there are different types of cylinders you can see. The one which is connected to the boom is called as the boom cylinder. So, this is uh, um, the hoist cylinder or boom cylinder. Okay. So, other one which is connected to the dipper arm, it is connected to the dipper arm is called the dipper arm cylinder. Okay, this is the dipper arm cylinder and the one which is connected to the bucket is called as the bucket or dipper cylinder. Okay. So, there are many hydraulic cylinders you can see. These hydraulic cylinders are only going to deliver the hydraulic power okay, which is needed for digging the material. Okay. You will be able to generate the breakout force and dig the material because of the hydraulic power generator. So, let us see how the uh, front shovel will function. So, basically um, th when you want to excavate the material, first place the shovel bucket um, with the bucket facing the uh, material which is to be excavated. So, lower it to the base of the, um, the material which is um, going to be excavated. Now, curl the bucket through the material to be excavated, the bucket will get loaded. Once the bucket gets loaded, now lift it. Now, lift the bucket to the desired height, then swing the bucket to the dumping position. So, obviously, a truck should come and stand closer to the, um, the shovel. Till you reach the, um, the truck, you have to swing the boom. Now, as the boom reaches the truck, you dump the, um, the material into the truck. So, very commonly you can see bottom dump buckets, bottom dump buckets okay, which will facilitate um, the material to be dumped in the downward direction. So, through the bottom there will be opening which will facilitate you to uh, dump the, um, the material. But the main um, the limitation of the bottom dump is these buckets are heavier. So, that will limit the lifting capacity of the, um, the bucket. So, otherwise the advantage is you can easily dump the material without much spillage. Okay. So, that is the advantage with the bottom dump bucket. Once you dump the material, then what you do is you have to swing it back. Okay. You have to go for the return swing, swing it back to the original position, then lower it so that you can start the cutting again okay, from the base of the material which is to be excavated. Okay. So, this is the common production cycle of the French shovel. So, what are the elements of production cycle? First is you are going to load the, the bucket with the material, you have to dig it. Once the bucket is loaded, you raise your bucket, swing it till it reaches the truck, then dump the load into the bucket, then return swing back to the original position. So, all these things makes up the production cycle of the shovel. Okay. So, one thing you have to note it here is from loading to dumping position, basically this machine is not designed to move, it will just swing its boom. Okay. So, that is why it is called as fixed position excavator. How to select this French shovel for your particular job? So, you know some important parameters related to the machine, so that you can make the choice of the machine for the particular job. Okay. So, basically for every shovel, the manufacturer will provide you information on what is the maximum cutting height for the shovel, what is the maximum digging depth for the shovel and what is the maximum dumping height for the shovel and what is the maximum digging reach for the shovel. So, all this information I can get it from the manufacturer. Okay. This depends upon the dimension of your shovel. So, what is this digging reach? It is the distance between the center line of the swing. Okay, you know that this um, the superstructure can um, have a 360 degree rotation ab about the slewing ring which is fixed below it. Okay. So, the distance between the center line of the swing okay, to the, um, the end of the bucket. Okay. So, that is called as a maximum digging reach. You completely stretch your boom or the arm. You completely stretch the boom so that uh, you will get what is the maximum digging reach possible. Okay. Okay. So, you completely stretch the boom, okay. then you can find what is the maximum digging reach possible with this machine. Okay. It depends upon the dimension of the boom okay. and you can get this data from the manufacturer. It will help you to know what is the maximum working radius possible with this particular machine. Based upon that, you can make the selection. And another thing is what is the maximum cutting height possible with the machine. So, you can see what is the maximum cutting height and this is the maximum dumping height. So, this information is um, the important because um, the accordingly you have to select the truck because your truck and the shovel 
they are interdependent machines. So, the dimension of the shovel should be sufficient enough to reach the top of your truck, so that it can dump the material. That is why we need to know what is the maximum dumping height with this machine. Okay? So, based upon our requirements, you have to make the selection of the machine. Okay? This information I will be getting from the manufacturer. Okay? So, for your project, what is the maximum digging reach needed? Okay, what is the working radius needed? You know, what is the maximum um, the dumping height needed depending upon the truck available? What is the maximum cutting height needed? Okay, you know it for your project. Accordingly, um, you can make the um, the selection of the shovel, match your job requirements with the machine specifications, and make the selection. Okay, apart from the above factors, there are also other fundamental factors which govern the shovel selection. So the important factor, as everyone knows, is the cost per meter cube of excavation. Okay, the unit cost of excavation, that is very important. For any job, what is the unit cost of production is a very important parameter which we need to estimate. This is because based upon that unit cost only, we are going to make the selection of the machine. See, whenever we have different options of machines for selection, we will generally go by the option which will give you the minimum unit cost of production or the minimum unit cost of excavation. So, for that we need to estimate this um, parameter. So, how to estimate that? You need to know the cost associated with the machine, you need to know the cost associated with the machine and you need to know the productivity of the machine, okay, hourly productivity. If you know these two data, I can find the unit cost of excavation associated with the machine. Whichever machine is going to give me the minimum unit cost, I will select it accordingly. So, basically you have to select the machine based upon the size of your job. Obviously, you know that. So, for a uh, machine which, which has to handle a very huge quantity of material, I have to go for a bigger shovel. Okay, the size of the jobs will decide the size of the machine. Obviously, when I go for a bigger machine, its mobilization cost is going to be high. Though with a bigger machine, you can get a high productivity, but the mobilization cost is also going to be high. That you have to take into account while you uh, work out the economics, okay, when you decide the selection of the machine. And another important thing you have to note that is when you go for a bigger size shovel, okay. So, you know that very commonly we use the shovel for in a quarry, in for quarry work, okay. So, um, when I go for a bigger shovel, the bucket will be able to handle bigger pieces of rocks. So, accordingly I can change my drilling and blasting pattern. So, I can have the drilling and blasting pattern, economical pattern in such a way that the rock pieces can be bigger because a bucket is bigger, it can handle bigger pieces of rock. So, that is the advantage of going for um, the bigger machine. It will reduce your drilling and blasting cost. So, all these things you have to work out the uh, economics and uh, uh, select your machine. Okay. So, apart from this, the other job conditions which is going to affect your selection is for particularly as I told you earlier, um, when you are going to handle the blasted rock. Okay you need more effort, you need more breakout force okay, to loosen the material and dig it and load it into the bucket. So, for that it is preferable to go for larger size shovel which can deliver more breakout force, so that you can easily do the digging operation. So, for blasted rock preferable to go for larger size shovel. And another thing you have to always keep in mind is that we have to balance the interdependent machines. Based upon your interdependent machine, you have to make the selection. Okay. As you know, your hauling unit truck and the shovel, they must be compatible because they work in team. Okay. So, you should not have a, a very um, big shovel um, and a small truck or a bigger truck and a smaller shovel. Okay. In um, the both the cases, you can see that there will be always some wastage of cycle time. Okay. So, that will affect the productivity. So, based upon the studies, people have found out it is always advisable to go for a truck with approximately 5 times the excavator bucket size. So, go for a truck with 5 times the bucket size. So, that is the ideal selection. So, that will help you to give the, um, the uh, optimum productivity for both the machines. And you should also um, to select the uh, machine, the shovel dimensions in such a way that it will be able to reach your truck. That is why the maximum bucket dumping height, okay, dumping height is also very important when you select your truck and the shovel. All these basic guidelines you should keep in mind when you select a shovel for the particular job. So, what are the other factors which affect the output of the shovel? Let us see. Okay, class of material, height of cut 
angle of swing, size of the hauling unit, scale of the operator, okay, haul unit exchange time. So, all these things are going to affect the um, output of a shovel. Okay, just now we discussed about the size of hauling unit. The hauling unit and the your shovel should be compatible with each other. So, the truck capacity should be 5 times your bucket size. Okay, that is the right combination to have the uh, maximum productivity. Okay, and the operator skill even that will also affect your um, the cycle time and the productivity of the machine. Now, let us discuss all these factors one by one in the um, coming slides. The first thing which we are going to discuss is about the class of um, material. So, how the material type will affect the productivity of the machine? Obviously, when you are going to handle some easy flowing material, okay, like loose flowing material like sand. Okay, so, you can easily fill the bucket in a very shorter sweep. Okay, but if it is going to be a sticky material or rock or chunky material, okay, so in that case, it, it may take more time to load the bucket. Okay, so, it depends upon the flowing ability of the material. Okay, so, that is going to affect the cycle time and the productivity of your machine. Okay, loose flowing material will fill the digging bucket in somewhat shorter sweep than sticky and chunky material. So, and another important thing you already know is um, uh, just like what we discussed for the loaders, okay, here also we can get the rated heap bucket capacity from the manufacturer. Okay. So, the manufacturer has done the rating of the bucket under standard condition say at the particular angle of repo say 1 is to 1 okay, and um, they have given you the, um, the rated heap bucket capacity. Okay, but you have to adjust, adjust that rated bucket capacity according to the, the filling ability of the material which you are going to handle at your project site. Say because some material can easily fill into the bucket, but some material um, will have a poor filling ability. So, rocks may have poor filling ability, sand will have good filling ability. Accordingly, um, the actual load volume in the bucket will vary. So, we are supposed to adjust the, um, the uh, rated bucket volume given by the manufacturer um, according to the material type which we are going to handle at our project site. Rated heaped bucket capacity must be corrected by multiplying by bucket fill factor based on the characteristics of the material we are being handled at the project site. Now, the another important factor which we are going to discuss is about the height of cut, how this factor is going to affect the productivity. Let us see. Okay. So, every shovel okay, can give its maximum productivity or optimum productivity at a particular height of cut of material. Okay. So, the machine will give you optimum productivity only at optimum height of cut. Okay. So, that optimum height of cut for the particular machine will depend upon the dimension of your machine. Okay. It depends upon the dimension of your machine. Okay. Say, if I am using a shovel, okay, um, to for cutting a very smaller height material. Okay. So, but its optimum height of cut is needed is more. Okay. But the actual height of cut of material in my project site is smaller than the optimum height of cut needed for the particular machine. In that case, you can see that you would not be able to fill the bucket in one sweep. Okay. You may have to go for another sweep to fill the bucket. This will increase your cycle time. Okay. So, in on a similar note, you can see that when the height of cut in your project site, that is the actual height of cut is greater than the optimum height of cut okay, for the particular uh, dimension of the machine. Okay. In that case also, your cycle time will be more. This is because your bucket has to maneuver for the entire height of cut, okay, so that um, the, it can fill its bucket okay, and, and there will be spillage also and all these things will result in increase in cycle time. Okay. So, um, the, what I am trying to say here is there is a optimum height of cut for every machine. Okay. Optimum height of cut for every machine which depends upon the dimension of the machine. Okay. If your actual height of cut in your project, in, if your actual height of cut in your project is less than the optimum height of cut needed for the particular machine. In that case also, you would not be able to fill the bucket in one sweep. So, your cycle time will be more, cycle time will increase. Similarly, 
if the actual height of cut in your project site is going to be greater than the optimum height of cut needed for the machine. In that case also cycle time will be more. Okay, you have to maneuver the entire height. So, only at optimum height of cut it will give you the maximum productivity. Okay. So, that is what is discussed in this line. So, the most efficient production is obtained with power excavator working at its optimum height of cut. Okay. Digging at this depth of cut requires no re-digging for full bucket nor spillage. That means, when the machine is working at the optimum height of cut, when the actual height of cut of material in your project site is equal to the optimum height of cut needed for the machine, you can fill the bucket in shorter sweep. So, there is no need for re-digging again to fill the bucket and there will not be spillage also. All these things will okay, improve your productivity of the machine. So, basically what is this optimum height of cut? The vertical distance that permits the bucket to obtain a full load without overcrowding the bucket or undercrowding is known as optimum height of cut. So, at this particular height of cut, I can fill the bucket in one sweep without either overcrowding the bucket or undercrowding the bucket. So, um, that way I can get my optimum productivity or maximum productivity. Okay, now, let us see how to know the optimum height of cut for the machine. So, optimum height of cut required for a particular machine depends upon the dimension of the machine as I told you. So, this will be um, equal to based on studies, they have found that it is equal to 30 to 50 percentage of maximum cutting height, maximum cutting height 30 to 50 percentage. Obviously, you know that for every machine, for every shovel, I can get the information on what is the maximum cutting height from the manufacturer. Okay. What is the maximum cutting height, what is the dumping height, what is the maximum digging reach, all this information I can get it from the manufacturer. And you should know that at its maximum cutting height, definitely it would not give you maximum productivity. Okay. So, the optimum height of cut will be 30 to 50 percentage of the maximum cutting height for the particular machine. Now, how to decide whether it is 30 percent or 50 percent, that is going to depend upon the material type material type. Say, if you are going to handle some easy flowing material like sand or loose earth, in that case at 30 percentage of maximum cutting height, I can easily fill the bucket. But if you are going to handle some hard material like rock or clay, okay, in that case I need 50 percentage of the maximum cutting height to fill my bucket. So, it depends upon the material type. For easy flowing material, I can take the optimum height of cut as 30 percentage of maximum cutting height. That is what is given here. So, for basically the optimum height of cut is from 30 to 50 percentage of the maximum digging height. Okay, this information I can get it from the manufacturer depending upon the machine dimension. And I should go for lower percentage that is 30 percentage for material which are easy to handle, easy to load like sand, gravel, loam loose earth etcetera, I can go for 30 percent. For hard to load material like sticky clay, blasted rock, I should go for higher percentage say 50 percent. For common earth, you can take it as 40 percent. This is how you have to decide your, um, you have to find your optimum height of cut uh, for the particular machine. Okay? So, basically it depends upon the maximum cutting height possible for the machine as well as it depends upon the material type. So, based upon that I can find the optimum height of cut. So, you have determined the optimum height of cut for your machine depending upon the material type and depending upon the maximum cutting height for that particular machine. But in your project, the actual height of cut may be different from the optimum height of cut. So, now, so if it is going to be as I told you, if the actual height of cut is lesser than the optimum height of cut, also it will affect the productivity. If the actual height of cut in your project site is greater than the optimum height of cut, in that case also it will affect your productivity. Okay? So, how it is going to affect the productivity we need to assess. Okay? So, we need to apply some correction factor to the productivity depending upon the actual height of cut in your project site. Okay? So, that is what we are going to do now. So, the optimum height of cut percentage 
is nothing but actual height of cut divided by optimum height for the given material and for the given bucket that means for the given dimension of the shovel. So, based upon that uh, you can find the optimum height of cut percentage. Say for example, for a particular French shovel, okay, the optimum height of cut needed is 4 meter. Optimum height of cut needed for a particular shovel okay, is 4 meter based upon the material type as well as based upon the maximum cutting height. We found that it is 4 meter. But the actual height of cut in your project site is say 2 meter. Okay. Now, what is the optimum height of cut percentage? Optimum height of cut percentage is equal to 2 meter divided by 4 meter okay, into 100. Okay. So, this is going to give me 50 percent. So, the optimum height of cut is only 50 percentage. So, that means your productivity is going to be affected because the height of cut is less than the optimum height of cut, actual height of cut is less than the optimum height of cut. This correction I have to do for the productivity estimation. So, I will tell you later how to do the productivity estimation in the um, upcoming slides. Okay. Another important factor okay, you should know um, that which is going to affect your productivity is the angle of swing. So, basically the angle of swing is nothing but the horizontal angle between the loading and the dumping position that is your horizontal angle between your bucket and the truck, between your bucket and truck. It will vary depending upon the position of your truck. As I told you for the ideal condition, it is preferable to place your truck close to the excavator. This is because these machines is not good at mobility, okay. they have poor mobility. Okay. So, that is why it is preferable to place a truck very close to the excavator. So, the commonly you can see that very commonly you can see that the truck is placed at 90 degree. So, the truck is placed at 90 degree, okay, 90 degree, this will be 90 to the bucket position. So, this is the common position. So, basically angle of swing is nothing but the horizontal angle between the digging and the dumping position, between the loading and the dumping position. As the truck moves far away, your angle of swing will increase your angle of swing will increase. As the angle of swing increases, okay, as the truck moves far away, your angle of swing will increase. As the angle of swing increases, you can see that your cycle time will increase, the productivity will decrease. So, angle of swing is the horizontal angle between the digging and the dumping positions of the bucket. If the angle of swing is increased, the cycle time increases, you know that. So, ideal condition, ideal production of shovel is based on 90 degree swing. That is what I told you, the truck will be placed at 90 degree. 90 degree is the ideal condition and the actual height of cut in your project site should be same as optimum height of cut. That combination that will give you ideal production. Okay. Now, let us see what are all the adjustment factors we have to apply while doing the productivity estimation based upon the height of the cut of material, actual height of cut of material in your project site and based upon the angle of swing that is going to depend upon the position of your truck relative to the, the position of your excavator. So, adjustment factors for the height of cut and the angle of swing for the shovel. So, as I told you if the actual height of cut is same as optimum height of cut it means the percentage is 100 percent. Okay, how do you calculate the percentage? Actual height of cut divided by optimum height of cut for the particular machine. If this percentage is going to be 100 percent, it means actual height of cut and optimum height of cut are same. So, in that case you need not apply any correction factor. Similarly, the ideal condition what we assume is the truck is placed at 90 degree to the excavator. Okay. So, the angle of swing is 90 degree. For both these cases, the correction factor is 1. That means, um, I need not apply any correction factor based on height and swing okay, but because it is an ideal condition. But if your actual project condition is going to differ or vary from the ideal condition, then in that case you have to apply the correction factor. Okay. Say, 
if you are going to um, do the, um, the cutting operation okay, and the height of cut is say lesser than the optimum height of cut. Okay. Say it is only 60 percentage of the optimum height of cut. You can see you have to apply this correction factor. Similarly, when it is 160 percent also you have to apply this correction factor. So, the thing you have to note it is when the height of cut is less, correction factor is also less. That means, the productivity is going to be reduced. When the height of cut is more, your correction factor in that case also it is less. Um, the, the productivity is going to be less. Similarly, when you consider the angle of swing, when the angle of swing is more than 90 degree, okay, when it is more than 90 degree, you can see that the correction factor is reducing. It shows that your productivity will reduce. But if your angle of swing is lesser than 90 degree, you can see that the correction factor is increasing. That means it shows that your productivity is increasing. So it, if possible to keep your truck um, to at an angle of swing lesser than 90 degree, it will be better than the ideal condition. That means because your correction factor is increasing, so that's going to increase your productivity. So depending upon the angle of swing in your project site, and depending upon the actual height of cut of the material which you are going to cut, okay, based upon that you have to apply the correction factor while you do the estimation of your productivity. Another thing to be noted is truck spotting clearance. That means, um, as I told you, it is preferable to place a truck closer to the excavator, but at the same time you should um, note that there should be some space left for the tail swing of the shovel. That means, you can have a complete 360 degree slewing. You have a slewing ring here, it can have a complete 360 degree rotation. Um, about the mounting. So, when it rotates, you should make sure that the tail of this shovel should not collide with the truck which is placed um, the closer to the truck. That is why there should be some space left for the tail swing of the shovel. That is called as truck spotting clearance. Okay. Other, other important factor is haul unit exchange time. That means, the time needed for the loaded truck to leave its position and for a new truck that is an empty truck to take the position that is called as the haul unit exchange time. Okay. So, this is also going to affect the productivity. If your truck is not readily available for the loader to load the material or to dump the material into the truck, to dump the material into the truck, if you do not have a truck readily available, then the loader has to wait for the truck. Okay. So, that will increase the cycle time. So, it is nothing but the total time required for the loaded truck to clear its loading position and for the next empty truck to be positioned for loading. So, we have to minimize this whole unit exchange time. So, we have to balance the number of machines, balance the number of trucks and the shovels in such a way that the waiting time is minimized. Now, let us see how to estimate the productivity of the shovel. So, for all these machines, the principle is going to be the same. You can see the formula, everything is going to be similar only. So, the production of shovel, it depends upon the heaped volume of your bucket. Heaped volume of your bucket, you can get it from the manufacturer. That you are going to adjust with the bucket fill factor depending upon your material type. Then divide it by the cycle time. Either you can divide it by cycle time or multiply it by number of cycles per hour. Either way you can do it. And another important thing we are supposed to do is, we have to adjust the productivity based upon the swing depth factor. Swing depth factor, nothing but depending upon the actual height of cut of the material in your project site and depending upon the angle of swing between the truck and the excavator, you have to apply the correction factor. So, I hope you remember this table which I showed you. Okay. If the actual height of cut and the angle of swing is going to differ from the ideal condition in your project site, then you have to choose the correction factor accordingly from this table and then apply the correction factor to the productivity. If the actual height of cut is same as optimum height of cut and if the angle of swing is 90 degree, then you need not apply any correction factor. If the conditions are going to be different from this ideal condition, then you have to adjust the productivity with the swing depth factor. And another important thing what we are going to do is, we are going to multiply the production of the, sh um, the shovel with the job efficiency. Okay? So, how much time your machine is going to work in a hour? whether it is going to work for 45 minutes in a hour or 50 minutes in a hour 
or 30 minutes in the hour accordingly you have to multiply um, to, um, with the job efficiency factor and get the actual productivity of the shovel. Now, let us work out a problem on the um, production estimation. A crawler mounted shovel with a heaped bucket capacity of 3.44 meter cube is loading a well blasted rock. The bucket fill factor can be taken as 1. Okay, depending upon the material type, we are supposed to take the bucket fill factor. It is readily given to you in this question as 1. It is working at 3.18 meter high face. So, that is mean that means the actual height of cut, actual height of cut of material is 3.18 meter. The shovel has a maximum rated digging height of 10.6 meter. This is provided by the manufacturer. Hall unit can be positioned so that the average angle of swing is only 90 degree. Actually, 90 degree is the ideal condition. So, for the angle of swing, I do not need a correction factor, but for the actual height of cut, we have to see whether the correction factor is needed or not. For that, we need to estimate the optimum height of cut for the machine. Now, find the ideal loose cubic meter production if the ideal cycle time is 24 seconds. So, since it is given ideal, it means the machine is going to work for the efficiency, job efficiency is very high, it is working for 60 minutes in a hour. So, you need not correct it according to the other job efficiency factors, because it is given ideal, it means uh, it is working for 60 minutes in a hour. Now, let us see what is the optimum height of cut for this machine. Optimum height of cut, as I told you earlier, it is going to be 30 to 50 percentage of maximum cutting height possible for this machine maximum cutting height for this machine. So, in this case it is handling well blasted rock. Since it is handling rock which is a harder material to deal with, let us go for 50 percent ok. 0 0.5 into what is the maximum rated digging height? It is given as 10.6 meter. So, we have to find what is 0.5 into 10.6 that will give you the optimum height of cut for this machine. Let us see how it is worked out. So, in this slide, I have just summarized the data, what are all the input data given in this problem. So, the size of bucket is 3.44 meter cube, that means it is a heaped bucket capacity given by the manufacturer. Bucket fill factor is given as 1 for the well blasted rock. Cycle time is given to you 20 as 24 seconds. The maximum digging height for the machine is 10.6 meter, and average height of excavation is 3.18 meter, which is the average actual height of cut in the project site. Angle of swing is 90 degree. The efficiency factor, it is going to work for 60 minutes in a hour. Now, as we discussed earlier, we have to find the optimum height for the machine. It is nothing but 50 percentage of maximum digging height. I hope you know why we took 50 percent, because it is handling blasted rock. Rock is a harder material to handle. So, take 50 percentage of the maximum digging height. So, 0 0.5 into 10.6 meter it gives you 5.3 meter is the optimum height for the machine. But what is the actual height of cut it is dealing with? It is 3.18 meter. So, in this case actual height of cut is 3.18 meter. So, it is less than the optimum height of cut. So, what is the optimum height of cut? 5.3 meter. Since it is less, obviously a production is going to be less. So, you have to adjust the productivity based upon the height. So, based upon the height, we have to adjust the productivity. Okay. For that, I need to estimate the percentage optimum height. So, how do you calculate the percentage optimum height? 3.18 meter is your actual height of cut and 5.3 is your optimum height of cut. Okay. So, now find the percentage. 3.18 divided by 5.3 into 100. So, it will give you 60 percent. Okay, the optimum height of cut percentage is 60 percent. So, obviously, this will be having an effect on my productivity of the shovel. So, now we have to choose a correction factor based upon the height and the swing. Swing is 90 degree. So, uh, we discussed about the table earlier. 
Now, let me choose the correction factor. These values are taken from purify, textbook may purify it all. So, uh, for 90 degree angle of swing and for 60 uh, percentage of optimum height, the correction factor is 0.91. So, you are going to apply the correction factor is 0.91. Now, let us see how the production estimation is done. The volume of bucket is, it is given as 3.44 meter cube. The heaped bucket volume 3.44 meter cube, bucket fill factor is 1, your swing and height factor is 0.91 and the cycle time is 24 seconds. So, you need the productivity in loose cubic meter per hour. So, convert it into hour, that is the reason it is multiplied by 3600 and the job efficiency here is 1. So, now you will get the answer is 469.56 loose cubic meter per hour. So, this is the productivity of your fan shovel. So, now let us discuss about the back hose. So, you can see that the basic parts and the operation are similar for both the machines, but only thing to be noted is the digging motion of the bucket is in downward direction. So, it is preferred for um, deep digging below the ground level. This machine is used for digging below the ground level. So, mainly used for excavation below the level of track. Okay, for commonly you can see its application in trenching operation for excavation of the basements, foundations, it is very commonly used. So, um, and one more important thing is this machine is very versatile in the sense for the trenching operation because with the same machine you can complete the entire job. Say for example, you need to do the trenching operation and uh, laying of pipeline. So, select the width of bucket equal to the width of the trench. So, that the productivity will be maximum. Now, you can do the digging of trench. Now, and you just change the attachment. There will be a coupling device. Okay, you can just do, uh, attach the hoisting attachment and handle the pipeline which is to be placed. So, place the pipeline with the help of the uh, backhoe. Now, backfill the trench okay, with the same backhoe. So, the, um, the same machine is able to do the complete job. So, it can excavate the trench, it can handle the pipeline just by changing the attachment and it can backfill the trench. Okay. So, the complete job is done by the same machine that is why it is very commonly used for trenching and this is the right choice of machine for trenching. In addition to excavating, you can see that the, um, it can perform all the trenching related functions that is laying the pipe bedding, placing the pipe, backfilling the trench. Everything can be done by the same machine that makes it more versatile. So, these are the basic operating parts of the backhoe. It is similar to a front shovel. Only thing is a digging motion of the bucket will be in downward direction. But one thing you have to note that cycle time of backhoe is 20 percent more when compared to front shovel. The reason is see whenever the material when the bucket has to dump the material okay, when the backhoe has to dump the material it has to fully extend the arms and then dump it. So, that will take some additional time for extending the arms and dumping the material. That is why you can see that the cycle time of backhoe is 20 percent more than the front shovel. So, um, additional time is needed for dumping because it needs to completely stretch the arms. And one more important thing is say for example, when you are using this um, the machine okay, for um, excavating below the ground level, if you are able to um, place your truck also on the floor pit, okay, you construct a ramp and bring your truck or the hauling unit on the floor pit, you can see that dumping will be easier you can reduce the dumping uh, time because truck is lying below the bucket okay because the truck is standing on the floor pit okay so in that case okay um, the, it will be more beneficial to reduce the cycle time that's why for deeper excavations what they do is they put a ramp and put the hauling unit and bring the hauling unit on the floor of the pit okay so that the um, the bucket will be above the truck it will be easy to dump the material into the truck so, this is a crawler mounted backhoe, a smaller one. So, like this different models are available. So, when you are working in a narrow space or confined areas, you can go for the smaller size backhoe. Okay. So, it also has an attachment of the grader you can see for grading. So, this is a, um, the combination of front end loader and backhoe. In some places, you may need this combination because 
I may have to um, use a backhoe for excavating below the ground level. At the same time, I may need the help of a, a front end loader to transport the material to a dumping position. Okay. When both are needed together, then you have to go for this front end loader backhoe combination. So, you have a backhoe as well as the front end loader. So, where you need the loader for transporting the material as well as you need a backhoe for excavating below the uh, ground level, in that case you can go for this combination. Okay. So, this is a wheel mounted loader. So, you have to carefully note that you have to extend this outrigger. You can see this outrigger, right? This outrigger you have to completely extend on both the ends and make sure that the load is transferred to the outrigger to the ground. This is very important from stability point of view. This is because the machine is um, the wheel mounted. So, when it is doing the excavation job, when the backhoe is doing the excavation job, you extend the outriggers completely and transfer the load to the ground through the outrigger okay, instead of the wheels. So, this will ensure the stability of the machine when it is doing the excavation. So, now you can see this video uh, how the trenching operation is done with this loader backhoe combination. So, this machine as I told you is a very versatile one. You can go for different types of attachments with this machine and use it for different applications. Okay. So, I can go for a light duty bucket that means, if you are going to handle lighter material, I can go for a wider bucket. But if you are going to ha handle harder material or denser material, you go for a narrow bucket with a short um, tip radius. So, that will facilitate the, the digging operation. So, another attachment you can see clamshell bucket. So, this is also very commonly um, to mounted on excavators or it can be even mounted on the cranes. Okay. This clamshell bucket is mainly for the deep digging or the vertical digging. You can see two scoops, these are the scoops which are hinged, okay. two scoops which are hinged. Okay. So, with this um, the scooping arrangement, I can easily use it for vertical digging. I can use it for um, the trenching or, or excavation of material from a manhole sewer or I can use it for excavation from a pier foundation. Okay. So, wherever I need some vertical digging, I can use this clamshell arrangement. So, this is also a very popular attachment. So, as I told you this can be even mounted on the cranes. And hydraulic breaker for breaking the rocks. You can go for reaper as we discussed earlier with bulldozer. Okay, the three shank reaper or a single shank reaper for cutting the weaker rocks or cutting the pavements. Okay. So, you can use. So, just by um, the, uh, changing the attachment. So, as I told you, there will be a coupling device where you can easily change your hoisting attachment and you can um, they use different attachments and go for different applications that makes the machine more versatile. Okay. As we discussed earlier for the French shovel, here also um, the, these are the important parameters which helps you in the selection. What is the maximum dumping height possible with the machine? What is the maximum digging reach possible with the machine? when you completely extend your arms, when you completely extend it, you can get the maximum digging reach possible that will give you the working radius possible. It is nothing but the distance between the center line of the swing and the end of the bucket. When you completely stretch it, stretch the arms, that will give you the reach possible. And what is the maximum digging depth possible? So, this information, uh, we will get it from the manufacturer, it depends upon the show, uh, backhoe dimensions. So, you know at your project site, what are your requirements? So, maybe um, the, what is the maximum excavation depth you need that you know? What is the maximum working radius you need for digging and dumping? You know that. Okay, accordingly, choose a machine with that maximum digging reach. Then, you know what is the truck available for you? So, according to that, you should decide 
whether the shovel dimension or the uh, backward dimension is sufficient enough to reach the top of the truck. So, what is the maximum dumping height needed? So, the, the, which is needed at your project site, you should be knowing. See, if you are going to use the same machine for handling some pipelines or trench boxes. So, in that case, you have to see what is the hoisting capability needed, what is the hoisting attachment needed. All these things you have to design before the selection of your backhoe for the, um, the particular project. So, this video again shows you how the truck is commonly placed very close to the backhoe. As I told you, the angle of swing will be 90 degree. Okay? The angle of swing will be the horizontal angle, the horizontal angle should be 90 degree between the loading and the, um, the dumping position. So, um, the truck should come very close uh, so that backhoe will be able to excavate the material and load it into the truck. Okay? The common ideal condition is 90 degree angle of swing. And also, you should make sure that when the superstructure, when the um, backhoe rotates about the slewing ring, the tail should not hit against the truck. There should be some sufficient uh, truck spotting distance between the truck and the backhoe. That also you have to make sure. Okay. Another important thing you have to note that whenever the manufacturer provide you the lifting capacity for the backhoe. So, when they provide the lifting capacity for the backhoe, they will give you a complete chart. So, this is because um, this also belongs to the cranes family. Okay? So, all these operations and the analysis is somewhat similar to the crane. Okay? So, you can see that um, based upon the operating radius, the lifting capacity of the machine will vary. What is this operating radius? It is nothing but the distance between the center line of the axis of rotation of this uh, machine to the center of gravity of the load in the bucket. This distance will give you the load operating radius. So, this distance gives you the load operating radius. So, when the operating radius is more, you can see that the lifting capacity will get reduced obviously. So, when the uh, bucket is completely extended, you can see it is moving away from the center of gravity of the machine. So, you can see that from stability perspective, the lifting capacity should be reduced. But when the bucket is closer to the machine, okay, when the operating radius is less, you can see that you can have a better lifting capacity. Similarly, the lifting capacity will also vary with the height. It will also vary with the lower height above the ground level. So, how the lifting capacity will vary with the operating radius and with the vertical height to the distance, you can get it from the manufacturer. We have to ensure that your loading of the uh, material in the bucket should be within the safe lifting capacity as prescribed by the manufacturer. And you should know that it will vary with the operating radius. So, we have to monitor that. And another important thing you need to, um, to note that is, um, just like as we discussed for the loaders, here also the tipping load is taken care. Okay? Whenever the manufacturer provide you the lifting capacity, the tipping load is taken care and then only he will give you the safe lifting capacity. And But you should note that it will vary with the operating radius. Okay, now, we have come to the end of this lecture. Let me now summarize what we have discussed so far. So, in this lecture, we have discussed about the basic operation of the front shovel and the backhoe and what are the applications of the front shovel um, and the backhoe and the, what are the factors which affects the productivity. So, the factors which affects the productivity of the front shovel and backhoe, everything is going to be same. Okay? Only thing is the digging operation is different in both the cases. Okay? Digging direction is different. In the case of shovels and backhoes, you need to know that cycle time depends upon the height of cut or the depth of cut and the swing angle. So, that is why if the swing angle or the height of cut, actual height of cut is going to differ from the ideal condition, you have to apply the correction factor when you estimate the productivity of the machine. So, the estimation of productivity is going to be similar for both the front shovel and the backhoe. Okay? 
So, you can work it out okay, for the back hoe. And another important thing you have to keep in mind is the optimum height of cut ranges from 30 to 50 percentage of the maximum digging height okay, for the French shovels we have discussed and you have to choose the lower percentage for the easy material, easy to load material and you have to choose a higher percentage for the hot to load material. So, that is how you find the optimum height of cut okay, for every machine. So, the optimum height of cut will depend upon the dimension of the shovel. Okay. So, that because the dimension of the shovel is going to decide what is the maximum digging height possible for the machine and also it depends upon the material type. Okay. That is what we discussed earlier. So, we have worked out some problem on how to estimate the productivity of the French shovel. In a similar manner, you can also work out the productivity um, of the backhoe. Okay. So, these are the references which I have um, to have referred for this particular lecture. Okay. I advise you to um, procure some of these books and prepare this topic. In the next lecture, we will be discussing about the trucks, okay, how to estimate the productivity of the trucks and how to balance the number of trucks and the number of shovels because they are interdependent machines. Okay. So, we will be also working on some problems based on that. Thank you.